In this video, I will introduce you to the new BTEC GMRS 50 V2 50 watt mobile GMRS radio. This is the updated version of the classic GMRS 50 X1 GMRS radio, which as far as I know was the first mobile high power mobile GMRS radio available on the market and the very first GMRS mobile radio that I ever owned. I will perform for you a quick overview of the radio. I will see if it really outputs 50 watts. And for the first time ever, I will perform a spurious RF emissions test to see if all of the online experts are correct about these cheap Chinese radios. The cost for the new BTEC GMRS 50 V2 is $220. Affiliate link below. And just to be clear, so that there is no confuculation, BTEC did send me this radio at no cost, and they asked me specifically to share it with you, my favorite viewer. However, even though they did send this radio to me at no cost, do not make the mistake of assuming that I am now somehow a shill for this company, or that if there is something that I do not like about this radio, I won't tell you about it. Because anyone that actually watches my videos would know that anyone making such a claim would be willfully ignorant. And therefore, anyone spouting such claims would be an idiot. The BTEC GMRS 50 V2 is designed in these United States of America and sold by Baofeng Tech, which is not the same as Baofeng, commonly pronounced Bufwang. And Baofeng Tech is based right here in these United States, specifically the city of South Dakota. This means that should you need help or support with your GMRS 50 V2, when you contact them, you would be speaking with someone right here in America. And Baofeng Tech just happens to be a Christian-based company. And even though you may dislike that, at least they have the balls to stand up for what they believe in. Now, before I get started, allow me to point out that just as in all of my videos, I will not waste your very valuable time while I blindly read every feature of this radio from the Baofeng Tech website, like some of those lesser YouTubers would do. Instead, I will only share with you the features of this radio that matter to me and that I think you may also be interested in. So when you purchase the new BTEC GMRS 50 V2 in the box, you will receive a user manual, which is very well written with zero incidents of Chinglish. It is 71 pages long with large, easy to read print. Perfect for those of us that identify as chronologically challenged. The manual even has pinouts for the mic jack and plugs for true radio dorks. And I must say, this is one of the best written, most complete user manuals that I have ever encountered. You will receive a mounting bracket as well as assorted mounting screws, a spare fuse, pretty much everything you need to mount the radio in your vehicle. You will receive a power cable fused on both the positive and negative leads. One end you connect to the power supply of your vehicle. The other end you connect to the radio. And because this is a 50 watt radio, a radio capable of squirting RF electricities at up to 50 watts, it is not recommended that you try to connect this to the cigarette lighter because most cigarette lighters do not have enough electricities to support a 50 watt mobile radio. You will receive a microphone with buttons which you can use to control and program the radio. Everything you can do on the front of the radio you can do by pressing the buttons. And it has a large push to talk button that when you press has a nice 
tactile click to it. You will receive this RJ45 to K1 adapter. You can use this to plug into the radio. This will then allow you to either plug in your microphone to the RJ45 plug, or if you have a K1 style plug accessory, you can plug it into the radio via this K1 connector. K1 connectors are the standard type of connectors that most Bufuang radios use as well as many other cheap Chinese radios. And you will receive the new updated BTEC GMRS V2 50 watt mobile GMRS radio. On the front, you will find a channel selector knob as well as a power on off push button and volume control. A few control buttons on the front, the RJ45 jack for either plugging the microphone in or the aforementioned adapter for K1 type accessories. On the rear, you'll find an SO239 connector. That is where you plug in your antenna using a standard PL259 coax connector. Buried deep inside the heat sink, you will find the cooling fan and you'll find a jack for plugging in an external speaker as well as a plug for the electrical power. The GMRS50 V2 is an SOC or system on a chip type radio also known as a homodyne radio. Homodyne. This is not a super heterodyne radio. This is why the price is so relatively low. And as previously mentioned, this radio is based on the older GMRS 50X1. On the outside, it looks pretty much the same, but there are some changes to the guts of the radio. There are updated audio filters specifically made for GMRS. The old GMRS 50X1 used generic VHF and UHF filtering, so this radio should be more sensitive in the GMRS range. And the power transmitter electronicals have been upgraded so that, amongst other things, they can output full power without dropping while you transmit. As you can see, the screen is full color and the colors are very customizable. You can change almost every line and make it whatever color you want. The screen is bright and easy to read. However, it is on the small side. This radio can listen to up. Uh, oh, oh, I almost forgot. For the purposes of this video, I will be leaving the protective screen cover on because that's how I choose to do it. This radio can listen to up to four channels at the same time, as indicated by those four slots there. However, this option can be turned off for us simple-minded people that only actually need to listen to one channel at a time. In addition to transmitting on GMRS, the radio can also receive commercial FM radio VHF frequencies from 136 to 174, my giggle hurts, and UHF frequencies from 400 to 520, my giggle hurts. This radio does both wideband and narrow band, as any good GMRS radio should. And like all GMRS radios, it comes preloaded and ready to use right out of the box with the basic 22 GMRS channels. No programming is needed to talk on those channels. However, to use the eight preset repeater channels, you will have to enter a tone for the specific repeater that you wish to make use of before you can make use of the repeater. The radio has 226 more channels that you can use for storing non-GMRS frequencies to listen or scan through, or you can use those channels for storing additional repeaters with different tone combinations. The older 50X1 was limited to using only eight repeaters, so this is a huge improvement over the older model. This radio cannot transmit on channels 8 through 14. If you try, you'll just get the screw you beep. And this is because the FCC rules do not allow mobile radios to transmit on GMRS channels 8 through 14 because 
Obviously, what kind of world would we live in if we were allowed to transmit on channels 8 through 14 on a mobile radio? Allow me to thank the FCC for keeping the world a safer place. This radio is Chirp compatible, so you can program it right from your porno machine, regardless of whether you get your pornography on a Mac, a PC, or Linux. But you will need the programming cable, which would plug in right there, which as with most radios is not included and must be purchased separately. Sadly, the GMRS50 V2 does have one major design flaw, and that is that it has no Roger Beep. The box says that it transmits 50 watts, so let's test that. And to test that, I will be connecting my Farsometer 2000 using this high-quality Messi and Poloni cable. The Farsometer 2000 is connected to a 50-watt dummy load. I will place the radio on my favorite channel, GMRS channel 16. Welcome to California. I will make sure that the radio is set to high power, which you can see as indicated by the small H on the screen. I will then push the large tactile push to talk button, which will send RF electricities out the rear of the radio through this high quality Messi and Poloni cable and into my Farsometer 2000 power and SWR meter. Now we all know that the Farsometer 2000 is not the most accurate power meter available. However, it is accurate to within a few watts which is plenty good enough for us normal people. And in case you're wondering, the reason for the dummy load is number one, to get a better reading on the Farsometer 2000 of the power output and so that the RF electricities are not actually transmitted out into the air so as not to disturb anyone. And yes, we all know that a few RF electricities will leak out of a dummy load, but as long as there's nobody within 50 feet of me, they will not be disturbed. When I press the large tactile push to talk button, you will see a few numbers here. You will see a large number in the center. That is the SWR, which we are not concerned with and which is not accurate because we are not connected to an antenna. We are connected to the previously mentioned dummy load. We will be concerned with the power output reading, which will be right there. And when I press the large tactile push to talk button, we get a reading of 4140 watts. Not exactly what we were expecting, but close enough because most radios will not put out the full rated power, although it would have been nice to see it a little bit closer. Now I should point out that you would never notice the difference in FARs between 35 or 40 watts and 50 watts. However, the box does say 50 watts, so we would expect it to be very close to 50 watts. But what everyone wants to know is how many FARs does it talk? And the answer to that is, this radio has just as many FARs as every other 50-watt GMRS radio, even if they put out a few more watts, because such a small difference in RF electricities really doesn't affect your FARs that much. Basically, with a good antenna, you can tox as far as you can seize. Using this radio, I can easily hit my favorite repeaters at 35 miles and 70 miles away, and I can easily talk with handheld radios at about 15 miles away. However, it is very important to understand that because Xenu has blessed my life and allows me to rent a house at the top of a large hill with good line of sight, your FARs will vary. Now, if you read the online forums or Reddit, you will no doubt see many of the experts and some people declaring that this radio, as well as other similar radios, are nothing more than cheap Chinese junk. And when pressed for actual details as to why they are junk, some people often declare that these cheap Chinese radios output the dreaded spurious RF emissions and are therefore very dangerous and should never be used. But most normal people have no idea what a spurious RF emission is and may actually confuse the term spurious RF emissions with something else. So I feel that it is very important to explain exactly what spurious RF emissions are. Unfortunately, however, because I am not a licensed ham radio operator, some people have decreed that I should not be permitted to talk about such technical things on YouTube. 
So to explain to all of us simpletons what spurious RF emissions are, I asked a friend of mine that is a ham radio operator to explain it to us in under one minute. Hi, my name is Mike, amateur radio extra class call sign K8MRD. I've taken not one, but three tests, so I feel I'm qualified to answer this question. The first thing we need to understand is what is a spurious emission? A spurious emission is defined as uh, an emission on a frequency or frequencies which are outside the necessary bandwidth and the level of which may be reduced without affecting the corresponding transmission of information. Spurious emissions include harmonic emissions, parasitic emissions, intermodulation products, and frequency conversion products, but exclude out-of-band emissions. So what that means is when we're keying up on our precious little boofwangs, we might not just be transmitting on the frequency we're transmitting on. So what does that look like? If we head over to the internet machine, we can take a look. Here's a UHF transmitter, transmitting at roughly 400 megahertz. This right here is what we call the fundamental frequency or the frequency that it's actually transmitting on. But notice when we go up to uh, 800 megahertz, we see this line. Then we go to 1200 megahertz, we see this, and then 1600 megahertz, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 4200 megahertz. These are all spurious emissions. So they're interfering. If you're listening on 800 megahertz, you would hear this signal. Now, why does that matter? If you Google United States frequency allocations, you'll get this really nifty chart. And this is showing the entire radio spectrum and who it's allocated to. So if we zoom in a bit, here in the 400 megahertz, here you have the 70 centimeter amateur band. Here up in the 460s, you've got your, your GMRS and LAN mobile. But every single frequency is allocated to something. So when we're using our radios and we're transmitting, you might not just be transmitting on the 462 megahertz you think you are, but on all those harmonics. Now, while you may not be causing interference to your fellow ham operator or your fellow GMRS radio operator, chances are if you're using a dirty little bowfang like this, you're causing interference somewhere. So, Rennie, thanks for having me on, and I want your viewers to know you can follow me on YouTube at K8. All right, Mike, nobody cares about your stupid YouTube channel. So let's see if I can get the GMRS 50 V2 to squirt out any of those dangerous and unclean spurious RF emissions. I have here my tiny spectrum analyzer, and when I key up the microphone of the GMRS 50 V2 using the large tactile push to talk button, we will see all of the signals that are coming out of it, all the way from 300 my gigahertz all the way up to 500 my gigahertz at this end. As you can see, the tiny SA spectrum analyzer is picking up a few little squirts of RF electricities. Those are just coming in from the air, probably from the wireless security cameras that surround my castle. And just like on that chart that Mike showed us, any dirty spurious RF emissions coming out of the GMRS 50 V2 when I press the large tactile push to talk button will appear as lines on the spectrum analyzer. So here we can see that is the frequency that I am transmitting on. And there are no spurious RF emissions at least none that are large enough to show on this meter that are appearing. We see one tiny one down there that is a few dB in strength, but as you just saw with your very own ocular fluid sacs, there are virtually no spurious RF emissions squirting out of this radio. And even if there were any spurious RF emissions, none of the normal people would care. So should you purchase the new BTEC GMRS 50 V2? If you are looking for a full function, high power GMRS radio that is not too expensive, and if your GMRS adventures do not require a Roger Beep, then this might be the GMRS radio for you.